And you are listening to WSIC. I am Joe Vagnone. If it's Friday morning, your business matters. I have a spectacular month planned for you. We're calling it Franchise Friday. Is that right, Paul? That's Franchise Friday live. We're looking forward to it. So uh, most of you that have been listening to the show for a while know that uh, Paul Dorsey is the uh, president of uh, Franchise Jantai, excuse me, a commercial cleaning system. And we're going to get into detail of exactly what that is because it's going to surprise you exactly what it is. Paul's also been a, a friend of mine for years, and you should have heard him. He's been on the show a couple of times. I think you've been a co-host before, Paul. I don't remember. No, uh, myself and a great friend, John Hetware, we, we had the highest oh. rated show in the history. There you uh, go. There you go. <laughs> and the Battle Royale broke out <laughs> on the stage live. <laughs> That's right. Okay. John, if you're listening, shout out to John. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, what what I do want you to know, Paul, is that any time I talk about franchising, it is a barely a, a very high rated show. Matter of fact, today is one of the first times ever we're going on the book live, so you can go to the book and and watch this. Go to the WSIC website and um, or the Facebook website and uh, see us live, and we're doing that because uh, some of the highest-rated shows we've done and the videos we've done have been based on franchising. That's what you're calling the good book now, Facebook, huh, Joe? The book. Yeah. We just call it the book. <laughs> I, I thought you were talking about the good book. <laughs> I, I, the, the good book. I open up on... <laughs> no, I don't know that it's good. <laughs> okay. No, I don't think I'd call it good. Uh, so you can go to the book and uh, watch us live today. Um, and we're going to be talking about all things franchise, and I don't know anybody more capable, skilled, and experienced than Paul Dorsey to dig into that as well. And whether I can control him or not, he's going to pitch you on why you should be buying a Jantize America franchise. I'm sure that's coming as well. Uh, but for those of you that know me know that uh, franchising or franchise resale, in my case, is a big piece of what it is that I do. And Paul, um, they really do enjoy the different uh, pieces of information and that sort of stuff that come from this show based on franchising. So many people want to be self-employed and need some guidance. And we're going to dig into that a little bit later. But let's let's start with this, my friend. Uh, remind everybody, for those that, that don't remember, what is Jantai's America? So thanks, Joe. And, and of course, it's all about the, the mission and not the commission. And through the Franchise Fridays, we're coming up here in the next four weeks. If there's any questions or anything I can help you about franchising in general, certainly my goal is to help people understand the great world of franchising. Jantai's America is an emerging national franchise. I sell area developers, also known as master franchise. Those master franchises by by major territories, sell and support local unit franchisees. Those unit franchisees are the coupling and take care of the end-use customer for all the facility needs, maintenance, floor care, and the ongoing jan- janitorial, along with supplies, paper, anything that we do in the building, the unit franchisees take care of. And you can look at all the Google reviews and all the wonderful things that they say about the Jantai's franchisees that I'm proud to support. And I believe that our area developers really play a significant significant role in the lives of other people. We're, we're life changers. So Franchise Friday, and that's the big thing. What's a franchise? And we can Google it and see a, a million different things. But Joe, as you know, in a nutshell, the franchise is just a group of small business owners that are all coming together, sharing in the profits and sharing in the expenses. And, and one of the reasons why you and I hit it off, Paul, um, is that I know some of the fastest I don't know I don't know if I want to say fastest but some of the most successful franchise success stories multi-millionaires I know came from commercial cleaning it is absolutely a place that you need no education no experience you knock on the door of a guy like Paul and in less than five years I promise you you'll be making more money than you've made in anything else you've been doing and I've seen it happen time and time again. It is my belief that the future sm- uh, uh, small business people that are going to be multimillionaires are going to come from the service-related industries, and yours is at the top of the list of that. So you're right there. Now let's back up for a second, okay? Because I know you hate to talk about yourself, but I'm going to make you do it just uh. a little bit of that. <laughs> How in the world do you own 
How do you become the franchisor? I mean, I don't think people understand. We're talking to the man here. You understand? We're not, we're not talking with just a franchisee. This is the guy that travels all over the country selling the brand that he owns. So talk a little bit. How do you get to that point? Well, that's good, Joe. And it's all about the brand and how Paul Dorsey got here. Well, lo and behold, I graduated local here at UNCC Charlotte, and I was uh, coming out of college working the restaurant scene, as many of my friends, and everybody told me, Paul, you're going to be a great sales guy. You need to be a sales guy. <laughs> All right, I'll be a sales guy. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I work? <laughs> what do I sell? <laughs> what do I sell? <laughs> well, yeah, right, you and me. So, lo and behold, I got an interview with a company called Janie King, which is a, a friendly competitor and also the world's largest franchisor. I didn't know diddly about franchises. I thought Ronald McDonald owned all those franchises. <laughs> I, I really did. There's Ronald McDonald. He's, he's killing it with all those corporate-owned stores. Started with Janie King as an outside sales guy, and he, I never wanted to be in this janitorial commercial cleaning. Who wants to do that? Oh, my gosh. I thought there were elves that actually came in at night. <laughs> time and clean these buildings because every morning, every day I left and every night I came back and they were all sparkling clean. L lo and behold, the Janie King story, I didn't know about franchising, but I went out and started knocking on doors in and around Charlotte, Statesville, this whole uh, tri-county territory. I sold over a million dollars worth of commercial cleaning contracts in one year in Charlotte, North Carolina. There's just so much business and, out and, there. And, and, I, and I want people to hear that. That is ongoing business that would continue moving forward, contracts that you put together. That's no small task. Residual income, yep. sure. I, yep. Again, I didn't know the term residual income. I didn't know the term franchise. I just knew go knock on doors and, <laughs> right, and, right. and people need cleaning. People need things, and you got to provide what people need. Then it will be continued to go on. So long story short, I, I was just doing a great job. Wonderful, th never knew anything about franchising, and, and I got a call one day from another friendly competitor, and it was uh, Jack Lapointe over at Jan Pro, and he said, "Hey, Paul, I'm opening an office in Charlotte. I, uh, I'm, I'm you're killing me. I'd like you to <laughs> come over here, <laughs> but I'm going to teach you about franchising." And I said, "I don't want a McDonald's." <laughs> <laughs> Joe then showed me the whole franchise. You're building and supporting these small business owners. The end use. So going back to the McDonald's or the Jiffy Loop, the McDonald guys aren't buying those to flip hamburgers. The Jiffy guys aren't buying them to change oil. They're building small businesses, supporting the local economy. Right. And so in, in your case, how did you find yourself in an ownership role? How does that how do you go from being a salesman oh. to the owner? Because that role is completely different. Well, funny, Joe, I just said to my wife last night, I wish I was still the sales guy. <laughs> <laughs> so don't think it's fun and games. <laughs> I, I get up at five just, and work till nine. So, and yes, just so all those small business people, out there, it doesn't matter how hard, how high you climb. <laughs> there's still another hurdle to go. Yeah. Yes, yes. Where's that margarita <laughs> we're supposed to be having at the... Uh, so, Joe, I was so successful. I was one of the original area developers or master franchises. I bought the Charlotte Territory from Jerry Gabowski. I guess it's been about 10 years ago now or so. Sold 89 local unit franchises in Charlotte. I'll go into the details there next time. And I, I just saw just a bigger picture. And it goes back to that passion where I knew there was a unit franchisee, a, a single mother in, in not only Statesville, but right. maybe Dallas, a, a, a small small business owner, not, not only in Charlotte, but maybe Chicago, that I could use my God-given gifts to help support these guys and, and through the sales and marketing. And if I could go knock on doors in Charlotte, well, I could hire someone to go knock on doors in Chicago or hire someone to go knock on doors in, in Seattle, for that matter. So I was so successful, I went to Jerry Grabowski, the founder of Jantize America, and said, hey, Jerry, I want to do this, this, and this, and, and grow this thing with national expansion. And he said, well, write me a check. <laughs> so, well, so I wrote him a check and moved everything down to Charlotte, started the national ex expansion, and uh, that's part of the story. And, and so one of the things I really like about your industry is you can have zero money and find a way to get started and in a very short period of time own your own cleaning business and grow it to whatever size you want it to be. It may be small enough that it's part-time 
or it may be something that's a full-time job for you. But th- this business can be whatever you want it to be. That's what I like about that. Sure, but I don't I don't want to lead anybody astray either. It, it's not a get-rich-quick program. And, right. and, you know, it takes money to make money. you got to have a business license. you got to have gas in your car. you got to get through the first 60, 90, six months when the customer payments are all getting set up and stuff, too. So don't quit your day job is the point there. Well, that is exactly my point. You can have a day job and absolutely turn this into a part-time business that can t- a- a- literally turn it into whatever size business you want it to be moving forward. There's very few businesses that that's the case and require such a small amount of initial investment. You're hesitating. Well, again, it's just e- even before I, you don't know what you don't know. And you think again, all you remember is that poor custodian back in the elementary school that was down on his knees, you know, scrubbing the, the, the restrooms and doing other things. Right. But also, you never saw that same custodian taking the hands of the kids and walking them across the sidewalk because there was no cop in the parking lot watching over. So that whole custodian, and we strive ourselves, we're more of a custodial than a janitorial company. And that custodial is just the whole act of caring. So more than just cleaning, it's an act of caring, not only for our customers, but for the facilities and everybody involved. Well, and, and what I was speaking of was the actual franchisee. Then let, now let's talk about that next level, which is this master territory. These are, these are the areas that I have watched people buy businesses and turn them into multi-million dollar businesses. So let's, let's talk about what that is business looks like and how much time got, do we have today because you you've got a whole hour buddy. oh boy <laughs> you, you've got an entire you, what you offer are these different levels right of business inside of your business it's unique in that you really do sort of have a franchise inside of a franchise setting so let's talk about this area developer this master franchise let's talk a little bit about that so i just recently returned last week from the phoenix franchise show and at the Phoenix Franchise Show, as along with the exhibiting out there, I was invited to be a speaker. And on my topic, and we can maybe do it next week, was the different types of franchise. So there's four different types of franchises. Not, not brand. There's over 5,000 different brands from McDonald's to Jiffy Lube to Jantize America. But the four types of franchises is that unit franchise the 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 husband and wife team the the husband's working on the business in the business going to take care of their customers whether it's a jantized local unit franchise or it's a a a printing franchise they're in the business they're working it every day (laughs) they're doing the grind and you know what It, it might be 40 hours a week it might be 80 hours a week and then you move up to that multi-level franchise. The second type is a multi-level franchise, not multi-level marketing, but multi-franchise where you own one, two, three hair cutteries, super cuts, all the hair, they're, they're great. Subways, most of those guys who own the subways, they own, own one, they have five, six, ten, and then you get into the restaurants. Those are all multi-units. They don't own one McDonald's, they own a hundred McDonald's, and the scalability is where they make it. And the lastly, the area developer, area developer buys a, a territory such as Charlotte or Chicago and is supported by the franchisor. And then that terminology, area developer, master franchise, regional franchise, it it all kind of gets intertwined. We could break it down a little bit more. But I believe a true master franchise would buy a a huge territory, such as I'm in negotiations with some gentlemen out in California who would actually become Jantai's West Coast. And they can have the whole state of California to develop along with the unit franchise, area developer, and multi-unit franchisees. So let's do this. Uh, Now, you know, as the co-host for the entire month, we're going to be talking about this for the entire month. Please feel free to text me at 704-577-8030. Any questions that you have on franchising, again, 704-577-8030. Send me a text. I'll be more than happy to ask Paul. Uh, Also, I want you to know you are talking with uh, the uh, master of franchising, Paul Dorsey. He owns the top 101 home base franchise in the country. Also, top one, one of the top 500 franchises in the country, and also on the top hot 350 home base businesses in the country. Fran- Jantize America. Let's take a break. We come back. 
Paul has a responsibility as the co-host. Just because he's a big wig doesn't mean I'm not going to make him responsible for what all co-hosts have to do. I'll get the coffee. That's right. <laughs> Which is he went and got something from the Google, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that article in a minute. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnone. If it's Friday morning, your business matters. We'll be right back. Gantize America. The system is one of the best kept secrets in business ownership today. And I've got one of the owners with me, Paul Dorsey. Paul, thank you, my friend. I appreciate you being co-host for the entire month, my friend. And and, and to say thank you, I'm, I'm playing that jingle any chance I get if you promise not to dance again. Nice. Franchise Friday here live. Live Franchise Friday. Now you've got a uh, article from the Google that we're going to talk about. So we, I saw your uh, your LinkedIn post or whatever, and it says the you know, franchise or not the franchise. So I, <laughs> right? Oh, what do you mean? You're ready to defend that, aren't you? <laughs> Whether we defend or debate would be good too. So weighing the pros of cons of franchising versus traditional business, I would love to debate you. Maybe we should get a chamber group gathered with Bill Russell down there and right, we could have right. the debate, have all the franchise ease and franchise orders at right. one time. And there's a great group called the Carolina Franchise Network now. There's matter of fact we can start looking at the Joe, there's probably ten, maybe a dozen franchise headquarters in and around Charlotte, North Carolina right now because of the success stories and the able to help right. all those small business owners. Right. So let's give Bill a call. Bill Absolutely. Listen, let's book it. <laughs> So, so uh, talk to me about the article you got. So, the weighing the pros and cons of franchising. Okay. What's the pro of, con- of franchising and, and what's the cons of franchising? What's the pro of traditional business? What's the con or, or, or what's the, the disconnect with traditional business? So, as a franchise, again, you have that brand awareness. You are starting off and you're not starting Paul's janitorial service or, or, or Paul's pizza place. You're starting off and you are a Jantize America franchisee. Jantize America was founded back in 1988. So that new franchisee that's coming on today, and I'm heading over to Winston-Salem to sign a new franchisee, that new franchisee, he's coming on with, what is that, almost 30 years of experience right. you know, and 30 years of backing behind him. This is, a great, this is a great point. I tell people when they ask me this question all the time, here's if the brand works or not. If you think you can, in your case, if you think you can walk in the door of somebody who owns an office building and say, hi, my name is Joe. Can I clean your building? Or hi, I represent Jantize America, 30-year-old reputation. Can I clean your building? Which one do you think they're going to choose? And which one gives you a better opportunity to succeed? And that is really important because I could ask that same question. Hi, come on in and eat at Joe's Sandwich Shop. Well, come on in and eat at Subway. You tell me if it's worth the 7 8 10% you're going to pay in franchise fees. And if you believe your business is going to be 10% or more because of the name, it's worth every single penny of it. Let's go to the next. So going back to the, the benefits of franchise, it's just the whole uh, you know, economy of scale. You can scale and you can grow. Scale, to scale is to grow a business. You can grow your business so much quicker because everybody's working at their strengths. In, within the Jantize franchise, my office in Concord takes care of all the billing, the credit, the collections. We actually have an online app. It's on your phone. Everybody gets the app on their phone. They see their customers. They see who's paid, what's paid, when's paid. They see all their inspection reports. It wasn't made by... Somebody from DNC and and uh, <laughs> and and what, what state was that? It, it, it was it was not <laughs> Iowa. Yes. <laughs> I'm just checking. No, no, no. I'm just checking. Not. Okay, give me another one. What what, what else you got? Legal disclosure. So <laughs> we have obligations in order to sell franchises, just like you as selling a business. Or there's rules and regulations I have to follow. Actually, there are a lot more rules and regulations if you buy a franchise instead of if you buy an independent. If you buy an independent, the only thing between you and a crook is somebody like me. I honestly believe that. Nice. You like that? Next one, financing. Financing. Again, you mentioned that. We could, you, you don't need to go, when you're buying into a franchise, you don't necessarily need to go to the bank or the SBA and get a $100,000 loan or a $50,000 loan or a $20,000. Because at Jantize America, we can in-house finance those franchisees with a small initial investment right. and then to grow the business. Well, and I'll tell you something. This is, this, if there is one fact 
that absolutely would lean you towards a franchise, it is this one. Because banks will loan to small businesses if it's a franchise about 90% of the time. Banks will not loan to small businesses 90% of the time if it is not a franchise. And so this is one of those factors where franchising does matter to a bank. And that's because all the systems and processes and training make a, a, a uh, corporate bank feel much, much better. So then you need marketing. Marketing is also what? Sales. You got you to gotta market a sale. So nobody should buy a business. Can we agree on this? Nobody should buy a business. I don't care if it's franchising or, or independent. If you're not prepared to sell yourself and the brand and the product and the service. I, I respectfully do not agree, Joe. Son of a <laughs> Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> then let's talk about that. Because there's one, Jantize America, where the area developer does all the sales and marketing and guarantees his franchisees customers. So the area developer's primary role is new business development. He hires sales guys, inside salespeople, goes out to the chamber meetings, knocks on the doors, runs all the ads in the Google and Yellow Pages and wherever else, and the area developer has obligations to the franchisor to reach benchmarks of sales. And if he doesn't, he could have some issues there too. So as a unit franchisees, they're investing in a nutshell, and purchasing the customers that are provided by the area developer. Okay, I'm going to need an insincere apology because the truth is it sounds like what I said is absolutely accurate for an area developer, but you do make a wonderful point. It is not accurate for your actual franchisees. Am I correct? You now? are correct, sir. There you. Uh, that was kind of like an insincere apology. I'm going to take that. <laughs> 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 Speed to market. We're you- market. Again, sign him a guy today. He starts training this afternoon. Yeah. He goes into his mentoring program on Monday with another successful unit franchisee. Yeah. Two weeks mentoring program. Not learns about the operation, but learns about the back of the house's books, all the insurance and everything else, the customer service. And we've got an account for him ready to start on March the 1st. So their first customers are coming within two yeah. weeks or less. Yeah. There's no question about that. And then the next one goes right along with that, which is training. So uh, if you think you know everything about an industry, I promise you, you're going <laughs> to you're going to find out what you don't know if you try and do it on your own. So I, I absolutely agree with that one. Talk a little bit about the franchise or support. You kind of mentioned some of it in your case with the back end administrative. That is a huge amount of help. It's probably the the least skilled most of the business people I meet. Are with it, which is the administrative and the in the fun, uh, financial side of things. So at, at, at Giantize America, which is unique, and it's probably unique with some other of my franchise friends too. You can have as much sport as you need or you want, and we'll call you every day and set up an eight o'clock phone call to set your alarm if that's what you want, and if you'll get out of bed, or we'll talk to you every four months and look at the books and make sure you're moving along the way that we want you to be. So I do, in, at Giantize America, I have an area developer in, in Louisville, Kentucky. We call him the animal. He's out there booming, killing $200,000 a month worth of business in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and then but he's on it. He's, 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 he's an animal. He knows what to do. He knows what his goals are. Sometimes his goals supersede my goals, and he's going to go take care of business. No problems. Let's go play golf. But I have other guys where it's like, come on, get out of bed. <laughs> so th- this next one is really important to me, uh, products and services and innovation. It is such an important piece of franchising. It is the one thing I promise if you try and be an independent in any industry, you're going to get behind in this area because you're going to be too busy running your business. Talk about that. Well, again, are you working on the business or in the business? And I can only talk for my spe- myself, too. I mentioned the Phoenix Franchise Show. I was one of the only franchisors who didn't have any paper brochures. And I looked at the people and said, what's your phone number? And I texted them all the information they need. The, the janitorial guy is also the IT guy. So the whole background and the more money that we've spent into the whole research and development of the IT world to help our unit franchisees and area developers and their growth. 
So site selection. Now, this one's interesting in your case because in, in your case, you're going to go wherever I want to go. So if I live around the corner, you're going to be more than happy to uh, find a commercial office building around the corner from my house that, that I can start working on. Or if I'm the area developer, I'm going to do that for my franchisees. You live and you learn. You, yeah. you, I used to think that. But now the big, great world of Google uh, for instance, if my area developer in sh- who has the Charlotte Metro is in Concord, North Carolina, which he is, and we share the office right. there, and it's all great, guess what? It hurts his SEO in the city of Charlotte because that's where the Google and the MSN and Yahoo are all doing their online searches. And you remember the days when you were selling yeah. the Yellow Pages? Well, nobody looks at the yellow right. pages anymore. Joe. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so uh, now I, I used, used to dominate the well, yellow guess what? pages. If back I have an office I... open up in Nashville, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't say try to get center city. So it's easier for the franchisees to get to you and sales guys. You don't want to be way out in the mountains of Nashville. So get get in there. But now within my agreement, it's mandatory. The new area developers need to be within the city metro of their office. Interesting. That's very interesting. And that's because of the whole Google search thing creates an issue? It's an online world. I was going to do the jingle, but I couldn't come to one really quickly. (laughs) (laughs) It's an online world after all. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Explain to me why you think a franchise is better for exit strategy and resale value. Because I know you want to fight that fight, don't you? Well, again, it's the proven successful model. It's also as it continues to growth. So if if I have a new area developer come on in in in, in Minneapolis or, 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 or Miami, it builds equity in my other area developer territories. If we have a new unit franchisee come on in Winston Salem, it builds equity in all the Winston Salem or, or Triad unit franchisees. So it it gets another person on the team. Well, guess what? If you're the independent janitor guy or the independent pizza guy you're fighting by yourself yeah i agree with that let's take a break now now on the key i want you to put on his jingle because i'm gonna make him a commercial right here that he's going to use all over the country you ready go ahead and start his jingle this week you're listening to local biz now i am joe Vagnone. and i'm here with paul dorsey jan ties america reoccurring royalty revenue low cost to start up unlimited growth potential commercial cleaning Industry is a billion-dollar organization. Recession food. Do you really want to make a good living? Gentiles is for you. All right, that's my commercial. I'm done with that.